So whole life insurance, it's definitely a terrible product. It must be a scam. I mean, listen to Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman. Uh, they lay out eloquently all the reasons why whole life insurance is a terrible place to put your money. And matter of fact, they even misspeak and they say it's a terrible investment. Now, let me just hit that. Whole life insurance is not an investment because it's guaranteed. Being an investment, something has to have risks. So, but let's hit the points that Dave Ramsey talks about as to why whole life is a terrible place to put your money and why he says buy term invest the difference. He says that whole life insurance is an overpriced life insurance. Very true, Dave. Comparing whole life to term insurance, one would say whole life is very expensive compared to term, okay? So from the surface, he's right. Secondarily, Dave Ramsey says, whole life insurance pays a huge commission to the agent. So the only person benefiting is the agent. Yeah, regular off the shelf whole life pays a commission of about 55% of premium. So if somebody puts 10 grand into a whole life policy, a standard off the shelf whole life, they're gonna make 5,500 bucks. That's not a bad day in the office. So check Dave, you're right, way overpriced and not only compared to term, and not only that, pays a huge commission. Now, let me make note that term insurance typically pays a higher percentage of commission, but because term insurance is cheaper, it pays less money. So if we compare volume of money, like the 5,500 versus the cheap term insurance, the rate's the same, but the volume for the whole life, yes, it's more. And he then goes on to say, you put your money into the whole life and you can't access that money for a couple of years. Like, why would you want that? You could put money in term and invest the difference and have access to the money immediately. So Dave makes a good point. So what I wanna do today in this video is I wanna literally dissect all of those. And we're gonna do it with factual numbers. That's right, my actual policies. We're gonna look at a standard off the shelf policy that I did for myself back when I was a financial advisor. And then we're gonna look at a specially designed and engineered whole life policy that we did for the infinite banking concept. Because Dave Ramsey also says the infinite banking concept is a scam. These are the topics we're gonna to cover. So stay tuned because I'm gonna wake you up and I'm gonna definitely uncover the truth about whole life. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna literally dive into what Dave Ramsey talks about as whole life. Now, I am convinced that Dave Ramsey doesn't know that you can design and engineer a whole life insurance contract. So speaking from surface level, Dave Ramsey must believe that whole life is whole life is whole life which means there's only one kind of whole life and it's all the same and it has all those bad features to it, right? Yes, but let me remind you, in the car industry, when you take a Ford Focus, a boring car, and I could pick any car, I could pick Ford Focuses, I could pick any car you want, but that's a pretty boring car, right? But I urge you to then watch Ken Block's rally videos of when he raced for Ford. What kind of car did Ken Block drive 130 miles an hour sideways in full control. It was a Ford Focus. So that begs me to ask the question of, what was the difference between the Ford Focus that I see at the Ford dealership? A boring car, a very boring, typical commuter car, versus the amazing 800 plus horsepower Ford Focus that, that Ken Block rallied and he did all those amazing videos doing crazy things inside of a specially designed and engineered Ford Focus. You know who else loves race cars? Let me introduce you to one of the biggest fans of race cars. Vivi, Vivi, come here. All right, this right here is one of the biggest fans of race cars. Last night we were watching Ken Block, weren't we Viv? We were watching some videos about that race car driver. Do you remember that? Yeah, what was he doing? Was he going fast? Yeah. And remember he was going like sideways really fast. The tires were just spinning. But he had a helmet on, so I gotta make sure I put my helmet on. So that car that Ken Block was driving was so engineered that he was able to do things not even thinkable in a traditional Ford Focus. Now, Vivi, let's do something fun. You wanna do something fun? What we're gonna do is we're gonna ask you to be a race car driver right now, Vivi. These people that are watching want to be race car drivers. And what do they got to do to be a race car driver? Besides put glasses on? Yes. 
they're gonna have to put some glasses on, but what they're also gonna have to do, Viv, is give me your fingers, hit the subscribe button. And not only are they gonna have to hit the subscribe button, there's a little bell up top that they're gonna have to smash that bell. Viv, smash that bell. Put a helmet on it, yep, they gotta, safety first, hit the bell, hit the bell. That's it, see? That's all you need to do to be notified every time we put a new video out. No punching bags were harmed during the making of this video. Right, Viv? All right. So what I'm trying to say is, if Ford Motor Company can make two different cars and change the way that those cars act and perform and actually work through design and engineering, then what's to say you can't design and engineer a whole life insurance policy to do something way more sexy than the regular off the shelf whole life like my policy right here? Nothing. Matter of fact, it's been being done like this for a long time. Look up Boli, B-O-L-I, Bank Owned Life Insurance. Banks are the number one purchasers of whole life insurance in the world. Matter of fact, if you go to FDIC.gov, what you will see is this right here, the top five banks in the United States and how much money they have in whole life insurance. Boli, how much does that say? It's over 75 billion and that's So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send that slide right there to Dave Ramsey, just so he knows that banks are not buying term insurance. Banks indeed are buying whole life insurance for their tier one capital. Why? Because whole life isn't an investment. Whole life is guaranteed by the full faith and credit of the insurance companies issuing the policies. And that is one of the requirements of banks tier one capital. So they invest that money in treasury bonds with the US government backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government and whole life insurance. Hence why there's so many vice presidents at every bank you've ever been to because banks are institutions and they need an insurable interest in someone to insure. Who is that someone? Executives, vice presidents. So that is who they're insuring. And what is the vice president getting? A deferred compensation plan, a benefits package, a golden handcuffs package, and a fully paid up life insurance policy so that if that vice president ever passes away, their family gets a death benefit paid by an insurance company funded by none other than their employer, the bank. The thing you don't hear about is when that vice president passes and graduates on to a better place, their family gets 50, 100, maybe 250. How much is the bank getting? Well, I'll let you do the research, but it's a lot. They're getting all the money back that they ever put into the policy and then some and then some and then some. Anyway, all I'm trying to point out is that my daughter is an amazing matchbox car race car driver. As you can hear from the walls, she is literally tearing it up out there in that specially designed and engineered race car called a matchbox car on the walls. So that should be bringing you to some type of logical conclusion here. Do you think banks are buying the same whole life insurance that your broke ass brother-in-law tried selling you at Thanksgiving? Probably not. It's probably designed and engineered to be way better from a cash value standpoint. Matter of fact, it's probably designed and engineered to include term insurance because why not? That gets you more death benefit for less, as Dave Ramsey said. And it's probably designed and engineered to have access to the cash value immediately in the first 30 days. I mean, come on. Could it actually be that the whole life that banks are buying on their vice presidents for their tier one capital is different than the whole life insurance you are buying and that Dave Ramsey is talking about? Let me let you in on a secret. It's not only possible, but it's done every single day. Matter of fact, when we talk about whole life insurance from a mutually owned company that pays dividends, we are only talking about specially designed and engineered whole life that has access to your cash value immediately in the first 30 days, at least a high percentage of that, 60 to 90%. Not only that, that policy gives you the ability to use the money while still earning uninterrupted compounding interest. If designed properly, which we do design them properly, it fits the MEX 7 pay rules, which means that all the internal growth of that whole life is tax free. We're going to get into that in a second. And it's protected against judgments and liens in most states. And it includes, drum roll please, a death benefit that can be paid tax free to your family the day you decide or don't decide to graduate and go on to a better place. 
What am I trying to say? I'm trying to preface that Will Rogers had it right. He said the biggest problem with Americans, Dave Ramsey included, is not what we don't know. It's what we think we know that just ain't so. Let that sink in. All this stuff you've heard about whole life being bad and about term insurance being better and investing the difference in investments, why would Dave Ramsey be telling you that? Hmm. Could it be because his ego is so big he can't go against what he said many years ago? Could it be that he only serves a clientele that is broke or living paycheck to paycheck, that term insurance is the only alternative? Could it be that Dave Ramsey owns a brokerage that sells term insurance? Ding, 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 winner, winner, chicken, freaking dinner. All of them check the boxes. But that's just my opinion, right? You're watching this saying, oh, Dave Ramsey's right, Chris Noggle's wrong. Well, let's go in and prove that. And I'm gonna do that with some actual real numbers. You see, here in my hand, what I've got is a standard, off-the-shelf, whole life insurance policy from a mutually owned company that pays dividends and has for hundreds of years, well, at least almost 200 years, and this is the company that I used to work for when I was a financial advisor. But I can go back to 2021 right here. This policy in December 1st, 2021 had a cash value of $39,872 and a death benefit of $218,998. I pay a premium to this policy of $570.21 or $6,466. I started this policy December 1st, 2014, which up to today, which is December 2023, makes this policy nine years old. But going back in time to 2021, let me just give you the readouts. Now, all I want you folks to do is I want you to tell me, does this sound like a good place to park your money or does it not? That's all I want you to think about. Remember that if you use this policy for the infinite banking concept, you're not gonna keep the money in the policy. You're actually gonna take loans against the policy and use that to go out and make money a second time. Any of that banging around noise is just us renovating our office spaces. We're getting ready to move into a new headquarters. That's right, so sorry about the background noise. So let's get into this policy. In 2021, this policy had a guaranteed cash value increase of $5,974. And that year, they paid a dividend of $1,294.77 right here in the policy, which if you add those up, that makes my total interest and dividends $7,268.77. Now, if we take that $7,268.77 and so we subtract the premium I paid that year, which was $6,466, just giving you all the numbers, folks. You would see that I made a net, 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 net of commissions, net of policy service fees, net of cost of insurance, that expensive stuff that Dave Ramsey said. Remember, he said high commissions. He said overpriced life insurance, blah, blah, blah. If I net it out and I just look at just the true growth in 2021, that means I made $802.77. Okay, that's how much I made that year alone. Now, if I divide $802.77 into the premium I paid, I will get what's called a cash on cash return. Anyone wanna guess what the cash on cash return was in 2021 in this policy? 12.44%. 2021, that was right after the pandemic. How many of you made 12.44% guaranteed in anything you had your money in? Not many of you, huh? Oh, oh, none of you? You made that in the stock market though, right? And then you gave it back and then you made it again and you gave it back and you made it again and maybe it's back, maybe it's not. Who knows, nobody's keeping track, but I made that. But hold on, I'm gonna go faster now. Let's go to the next year, 2022. Here we are, the same statement. I'm gonna read you the numbers. Guaranteed cash value increase, 6,184 on the button, guaranteed. Okay, then my dividend this year was more and it was $1,537.10, which means my policy that year grew by $7,721. If I subtract $7,721 from the premium I put in, $6,466, I made $1,255 that year. If I divide the $1,255 I made, net, 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 into the premium, 
I get my cash on cash return for 2022. How much was that? 19%. So 2021, I made 12.44. 2022, just one year later, didn't do anything different, didn't put any more money in, didn't take on any additional risk, didn't work any longer or any harder to make this. I made 19% this year. Not bad. How many of you in 2022 made 19% almost all guaranteed? None of you, but it gets even better right up here, December, 2023. Today is December 18th. So this is fresh. Here's the numbers. Guaranteed cash value increase. I even highlighted it for you. Guaranteed $6,406. That's how much I made in interest. Okay, then I got paid a dividend of $1,644.69. See how all these numbers just keep going up? You see, every single day inside of a whole life, you'll have more money than you had the day before. Every single year that goes by, you'll have more money than you had the year before. Guaranteed. How much did I make this year? $8,050.69. Subtract that pesky premium that Dave Ramsey says is overpriced, $6,466. I made $1,584.69. Now, if I divide that gain, that net, net, net gain into my premium for that year of 2023, what was my staggering cash on cash return? Well, let's do another drum roll and put the glasses on. You ready for this? 24.5% cash on cash return inside of that whole life insurance policy. Oh, and by the way, I failed to mention that all that gain is tax free. Yes, why? Because it is not a Mac. It is built the proper way, but it is just a standard off the shelf for, for I mean, whole life insurance policy that is not especially designed and engineered one like we do with the new policies. Now, bonus round. Let's go into the same years with a policy that I designed and engineered to be used for the infinite banking concept. You guys were super excited about those numbers. Let's look at these. So what I wanted to do is go into a specially designed and engineered whole life that fixes a lot of the problems that came along with that traditional regular off the shelf whole life that I just went over the numbers, which you gotta agree, were pretty freaking impressive. Now, what's the difference between the two? This policy that we're gonna go over here was designed and engineered for the infinite banking concept, which number one, to do this policy the way that I did, resulted in a commission reduction of about 90%. So remember I said the high commission, 10,055% was 5,500 on the regular whole life. This one, a $10,000 premium would result in a 90% reduction of that other one. So if we figured the math out on that, 5,500 was the regular commission minus about 90%. So that means the commission on this policy you're going to look at now would be about $550, give or take a buck or two. I'm just guessing here, but that's about where it would be. So Dave Ramsey, eat your heart out. That's cheaper than a term commission would be. But what was the result in designing it for the infinite banking concept, reducing the death benefit, adding term insurance to the policy design as a rider, it results in a lower commission. But not just a lower commission, a lot more cash value. How much more cash value? Well, here it is. This is my illustration. So this illustration, I put roughly 30,000 $357.68, $30,000 premium, but I do it quarterly. So that extra 357 is a, a load they charge on the premium for me doing it quarterly. How much did I have access to at the end of the first year? 27,534. So I had access to 27,000 of my 30,000 and change. What does that mean? It means I had over 90% of my money available to me immediately to use to reinvest or loan money out or pay off debts or pay off a car loan. Do you see what I'm saying? The old whole life probably had no cash value in the first couple of years. This policy had 90% available in the first year. But now let's do this. I've got three of my policy statements right here, just like before. But what I did is I went in and I did the math to see what the returns would be and the growth would be. Now remember, I had access to 90% more money than I did in that other older policy that I started, the traditional. That's the big difference. So when Dave Ramsey says you don't have access to your money, yeah, that's in a regular whole life. But a regular whole life, after nine years, you saw the returns, 24.5% in the ninth year. This policy is gonna be a little bit less, but I had access to a lot more. So I get to make money twice instead of once on the same dollar. So here's the results. 
In year seven of this policy, designed and engineered for the infinite banking concept, the seventh year, I put premiums of 30,357.68 in. My policy's growth that year, from year six to year seven, which was the same as 2021 on that one, was 33,609 meaning my net 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 gain on the policy interest and dividends that year was three thousand two hundred fifty one dollars and thirty two cents divide that into the premium of thirty thousand three fifty seven and sixty eight cents and i have a ten point seven percent cash on cash return go one year later year seven to eight my growth was thirty five thousand two oh three subtract the premium of three fifth or thirty thousand three fifty seven and change and that means my net 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 gain was four thousand eight hundred forty five dollars and thirty two cents divided into the premium gives me my cash on cash return of sixteen percent just a smidgen shy of sixteen percent to be absolutely precise if you're doing the math but i round it up because that's what you do in math right we were taught that in third grade when the decimals are higher than five, you round up. So that's what I did. Okay, years eight to nine, how much did it grow? 36,966. Have you noticed that each year is more, just like the other one? That means my net 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 growth is $6,608.32. Divided into the premium gives me a 21.8% cash on cash return. Although not as strong as the regular whole life, but that proves to you that these specially designed and engineered policies are very close, but give you access to almost all of the money immediately in the first year. Actually, you have access to take your cash value as a loan immediately in the first 30 days of every policy that I do. So let's go back to the objections that Dave Ramsey had as we wrap this episode up. Dave Ramsey says they're high commission. The only one making any money is that, that nasty agent. Buy term and invest the difference because the premiums are less. Dave, we reduce the commissions in these specially designed whole lives and that reduction in the policy design, the de policy's death benefit and the addition of term insurance riders results in about a 90% reduction in this design of our commission. And it's always between 60 and 90% reduced commission. That's the only way it works. So that when we give, you the client or the policy owner gets gets what gets more cash value negating what dave ramsey says secondarily dave ramsey says you don't have access to your cash value i just showed you indeed you had access to your cash value immediately in the first 30 days dave ramsey also says that they're overpriced why dave that's we're reducing the death benefit we're adding the term insurance like you always tell everybody to do buy term and then what are we doing dave we're using the infinite banking concept we're paying off debt dave you should love us you love people to be debt free we're doing that but we're doing it because we're putting money in the policy why so that we earn uninterrupted compounding interest we get to use the money without sacrificing the interest and dividend compounding that we earn your buy term investment the difference can't do that dave plus we're paying the debts down we're using your snowball method and then we're recycling and recapturing the money but we're just not putting it back in an envelope like you tell people to do we're putting it back into the policy as a loan reduction reducing the interest charged by the insurance company on the loans so that we are winning dave not losing you said infinite banking was a scam dave mathematically we have all the mathematical proof. We have calculators that can do this. It works 100% of the time. The only way the infinite banking concept doesn't work is if the client, the policyholder, fails to implement the infinite banking concept, which is the process of taking back the banking functions in your life. Listen, I don't know how much more I can literally dissect this for you. I showed you a regular whole life, which was pretty impressive, you have to admit, but only impressive in the later years when it actually got up to, to have some cash value to use. My other policy designed for infinite banking, really impressive, right? So why wouldn't you do this? Why wouldn't you use the infinite banking concept to pay off your debt, to pay off your car loans, to invest money, to buy real estate, to do whatever it is you do with money, to invest in things that you know, like, and understand? Because mathematically, forget about my opinion, mathematically, I can't find a reason to not use this. Folks, I hope this helped you. I hope this breaks down some of the myths, some of the, the debunking of those myths that you've been told because listen, people have opinions, but math does not lie. If you liked this episode, make sure you check this one out, BYO Bank. 
It teaches you all about the infinite banking concept. Thanks for joining. See you next time.